again and then romans chapter 5 reading from verse 1 romans chapter 5 verse 1 therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ and then in verse 2 it tells us by whom also we have we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of god look at verse 8 there in verse 8 but god commended his love toward us in that while we are yet sinners christ died for us and then in verse 9 it says much more then being justified being justified this is indispensable justification as it brings us to himself and we're converted much more than being justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him in verse 18 it tells us therefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation even so by the righteousness of one that is of christ of our savior of that final sacrifice of the fire of our substitute the only acceptable substitute to the lord it says by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life acts of the apostles chapter 3 reading there from verse 19 acts chapter 3 reading from verse 19 it tells us, repent ye therefore to be forgiven, repent ye therefore to be saved, repent ye therefore to have the grace of God in your life that will make you escape the final judgment, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. There's no blotting out of sin until repentance has taken place. Lord, I will not do that anymore. Grant me your grace. I did that in my foolishness. I did that in my care, in my carelessness. Lord, I plead. I'm sorry. I'm sorrowful for the sin I've committed. And I will not return to my vomit anymore. I need your grace. I know that Christ died for me. It is as we confess that and we believe that in our heart that then the sins will be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Verse 26, it tells us unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquity. That's what he wants to do for the small and the great. That's the salvation for the young and for the old. It's not just religion. It's not just churchianity. It's not just, you know, I come to worship. There must be that definite experience of salvation you must be able to tell the day the time you turned away from your sin and you turned unto the lord and he took your sin away and then the spirit of god bore witness in your heart you are now a child of god and you are ready for heaven shall the trumpet sound any time unto you first god have been raised up his son jesus sent him to bless you what's the blessing in turning away every one of you from his iniquity we're coming to point number three now point number three is the glory of saints the, the joy of saints in glory joy joy everlasting will be yours will be mine will be ours in jesus name revelation chapter 20 verse 6 it tells us blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power but 
they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years and then after that and then after the great white throne judgment forever and ever you'll be with the Lord we shall be with the Lord in Jesus name chapter 21 I'm reading from verse 1 Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea follow the whole revelation all those who drowned in the sea and their bodies were not recovered all the bodies will be recovered and they'll be judged hell would also all the people that were in hell they would also be removed from there to go to the lake of fire and the sea itself all the ocean were told that now there will be no more sea look at verse 2 in verse 2 it tells us and I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and then in verse 3 it tells us it says and I had a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and shall be their God I will be there Look at verse 4. It says in verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Somebody over there will say, Amen. You know, there are people that wonder, Why should I cry? Why should we ever have tears? What's God going to wipe away? You've never had any sorrow. You've never had any pain. You've never had any challenge. You've never been on a crossroad. And you've never shed any tears. Nothing has ever bothered your life. Everybody just cleared for you anytime you were coming. And there was nothing to cry about. Then you'll be the isolated one when we get over there. But all the rest of us, if you have ever cried, if you have ever been sorrowful, if any painful thing ever happened to you, and God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away verse 5 it says in verse 5 and he shall he that sat upon the throne says behold i make all things new behold i make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful whatever you hear from other people the people that just want to and they use the name of God God said God spoke God did this and God revealed to me they use the name of God God will judge the liars on the final day but now here are the words of the Lord these words are true and faithful and in verse 6 it tells us and he said unto me it is done I am Alpha and omega the beginning and the end and i will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely and then verse seven he that overcometh shall, shall inherit all things and i will be his god and he shall be my son you'll be there i said you'll be there and there will be joy forevermore in Jesus' name. The joy of saints in glory. Three things. Number one, the everlasting joyfulness of the sanctified in glory. Number two, the endless joylessness of sufferers for their godlessness. Number three, the enduring journey of saints 
to glory. Number one, everlasting joy. Where are you? You're inherited in Jesus' name. Everlasting joyfulness of the sanctified in glory. Look at Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice, rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. After, when you are saved, God himself writes your name in heaven. My name is written there. I said my name is written there. In that book so white and fair, in his kingdom, my name is written there. I pray your name will be written there, remain there, and be sustained there forever in Jesus' name. Rejoice, not because, you know, you are healed of sickness. That's good, but the body will go to the grave eventually. It is not because, you know, we cast out devils. That's good, but if those people, if they are not born again, they'll still be buried and then they'll go to judgment. But rejoice because you, the preacher, you, the pastor, you, the soul winner, you, the Christian, you, the born again, brother, sister, small, great, young and old, rejoice because your names are written in heaven and for such people there will be joy everlasting for your life in Jesus name Isaiah chapter 35 we're reading from verse 8 Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8 and an highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the wayfaring men do fools shall not err therein verse 9 it says in verse 9 no lion shall be there no lion shall be there you know when it says lion the kingdom of god is not made for animals and the path, the narrow path that leads to the eternal life is not made for animals. He's talking about people that have the lion-like nature, the cruel, the wicked. When they get angry, it doesn't matter who they are angry at, and they don't care for the consequences. They are angry, they are angry. Like a lion, they can pounce off somebody and almost tear the person in pieces. He didn't obey me. I said he should go this direction. He didn't go that direction. And then the lion-like, lion-like nature will come from within. And when you look at their face, even their face looks like the face of a lion. Those people that do not kill that disease, that infirmity, that iniquity of anger, they will spend eternity in hellfire. No lion shall be there. There are people, they get angry with their wives and they take a negative decision. And they said, if I am the child of my father, if it's my mother that gave birth to me, I declare I don't have anything to do with this wife, woman, until I die. I will show her I can keep myself and control myself because of that thing you did. Forget about me. And they're serious. And their anger is bottled up and is sustained. And anybody can beg them, anybody can appeal to them. They say, please, don't wade into this matter. Once I take a decision, I'm angry at this woman. I don't love this woman. Even though I will not divorce, even though we're living together, I'll make her to suffer for what she has done and the bottle of that anger. 
and they say when we're thinking about heaven and singing about heaven they say heaven is my home i am glad i am going to heaven i am glad my name is there you're deceiving yourself and if you're the woman that does that you've taken a decision in anger against your husband and you say me Oh, this, this man will know. He will know that I am a woman of difference. And once I say, here is it, that is it. Whatever he does, however he pleases, he may send his father, his mother to me to come and beg me. I make up my mind. I am angry. You know, some people, you even ask them, you say, uh -uh, the way you are looking, are you angry? Of course, you can tell. I'm angry. They tell you. And it says, no lion shall be there. If your goal is, going, is to get to heaven, if your goal is to escape hellfire forever and ever, ease up and forget and forgive all those sins and face the Lord Jesus Christ who has the grace and the power to erase that thing out of your life. Cease doing evil and sees manifesting the nature of the lion because heaven is made for those who are converted those who are transformed those whose lives are totally changed and there is no hypocrisy and there's nothing secret they are hiding you know, under the carpet no lion shall be there nor any ravenous beast shall go up therein it shall not be found there but the redeemed of the Lord shall walk therein and then in verse 10 it says and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy everlasting joy everlasting joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away I did hear a good amen. amen. You know, if you remember when you came to the Lord and you had the message of salvation and you repented, understanding or kneeling down, and you give yourself to the Lord, you didn't know any other thing. A man, a woman did not stand between you and God. You just said, I give myself unreservedly unto the Lord and this journey of life has started today I'm going to finish with the Lord now preaching did not come in and ministry did not come in work did not come in full-time work did not come in partial my part-time work did not come in profession did not come in all you thought about you thought about Christ and Calvary and salvation and then I will get to heaven after salvation all these things that came in and when this is not done this way you get angry remove that that person came in and because of the way he stands and because of the way he bends and because of the way he moves, then you get angry. If that was not there, then take away that one. So that your everlasting joy, nobody will hinder that everlasting joy in Jesus' name. I look at Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, and th that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Look at verse 10. It says, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory. That's the goal. That's the goal. That's the goal of our salvation. Don't be bogged down with anything here on earth. That he may bring many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Verse 11. For he, for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren number two now number two is the endless joylessness of sufferers 
for their ungodliness. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Verse 15, and whosoever was not found, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. When the children of Israel returned from captivity at the time of Ezra, many people offered themselves, they wanted to serve the Lord. And then Ezra said, hold on, and he checked the books. And there were people excited, willing, skillful, happy, wanting to join those who rendered service to the Lord that time of Ezra because their names were not found written in the book. They were cast off. The same thing happened at the time of Nehemiah. There were people that were excited. I'm an Israelite and this is my tribe. They couldn't find their record in the books that were written. They were cast off. Now it's going to be very serious that somebody has named the name of Christ, somebody has many copies of the Bible at home, somebody has been connected with all this message, social media, and the CD and DVD, somebody has been going to retreat, has been going to Congress, has been going to all this place, somebody had devoted his whole life, full time, working for the Lord, and then to come to that final day, and the Lord goes through out the books, he was saved before, but his backsliding. He was saved before, but he's raised up a calf. He was saved before, but he's now dancing before the calf that Aaron has made. And he has come back from the Lord. The just shall lay by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Because thou sayest, I have need of nothing. I am rich. I have this. I have that. And you do not know that uh, you are wretched and miserable and naked and blind. Repent. Otherwise, if you remain lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And the Lord is saying, remember the people that came out of Egypt later, the Lord rejected. And those people that did not keep on believing, they perished in the wilderness. And those those people, their names will not be in the book of life. And whosoever, an ex-Christian, ex-believer, former believer, but now a backslider, a secret sinner, a fornicator, an adulterer, a person that is playing with lie. Lying, lying is now is a, is a lifestyle. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And the word of God says in Revelation chapter 14, reading from verse 10, and it said the smoke of their torment ascendeth all forever and ever. Look at verse 11. In verse 11 it says, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth all forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. But the chance is still for us today that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And today is the day of God's mercy and the day of God's grace and the day of abundant love. And I pray his mercy and his grace and his compassion will reach out to every one of us in Jesus' name. Number three here is the enduring journey of saints to glory. We're looking at uh, Psalm 73. Psalm 73, and I'm reading here from verse 24. Psalm 73, we're looking at verse 24. It tells us here, it says, Thou shalt guide me. Thou shalt guide me 
with thy counsel and afterward proceed me to glory thou shalt guide me guide me guide me your sage as many as are led by the spirit of god they're the children of god you are a child of god and every way any step you want to take no matter how much money is there no matter popular people they say to you take the decision they put you here they put you there please allow me i want to be guided by the lord as many as are led and guided by the lord they shall be saved thou shalt guide me with thy counsel with thy counsel with thy counsel anybody there so proud you don't need counsel from the lord through his servants anymore i know what i'm doing I know where I'm going. I know what decision I've taken. Do you really know? Do you know everything? Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Look at verse 25. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Well, the journey, and I pray this journey will finish well your journey will finish well my journey will finish well now if our journey is going to finish well how do we act step by step day after day in this journey I look at journey J join the chariot taking saints to glory you must start the journey that way. Join the chariot. Get born again. Get converted. Come into the flock of the people of God. There's a chariot and it's taking the saints of God to glory. J, join the chariot, taking saints to glory. O, occupy in the propagation and progress of the gospel while you're on your journey on your journey to glory on your journey to the promised land on your journey to the presence of god occupy in the propagation and the progress of the gospel you use your gifts for the good of others use your gifts for others good what will benefit them what will help them to get to life eternal? What will make them lift their body? The gift you have, don't you so give to distress anyone, destroy anyone, discourage anyone while you're on your journey to glory land. Make sure that you're an encouragement to others who are also on their way to glory. Our remember his provision of sufficient grace. As we move on in this journey, remember, Remember, it's provision for suffi or sufficient grace. Whatever you are going through, my grace is sufficient for you. And nurture the vision of the everlasting glory. Whatever trouble you go through here, remind yourself that there is uh, going to be a great reward on the final day. Nurture that vision. You know where you are going, and you know where you have started, and you know the road, the path of righteousness and holiness that gets there. Not sure the vision of everlasting, of the everlasting glory. He endure today's pain for the greater gain. No gain without pain. No pain, no gain. So endure today's pain. Whatever is happening any day, and don't let, let that make you look back for think I'm going back. I can't, you know, stay there anymore. I can't do this anymore. This one is too much. While you're on your journey, you endure today's pain for the greater gain. And why yoke inseparably with the Lord of glory? Himself and yourself, yourself and his and himself, your hand in his hand, holding you. Without me, you can do nothing, but with him, you can climb every mountain. 
you can go through any river you can face any challenge you can defeat any enemy anything that stands between you and glory you will overcome in jesus name i will be an overcomer i will be an overcomer i will be an overcomer you yoke yourself inseparably with the lord of glory the lord will never leave you the lord will never forsake you and the lord will not allow you to die and to finish in the middle of your journey you will endure to the end in jesus name and when the saints go marching in praise god i see you there you'll be part of the saints marching into glory in jesus name will you be there will i be there where are you tell the lord rise up now and tell the lord and say lord here i am i will be there you will be there you will be there you must make sure nothing hinders you from that endless eternal everlasting joyfulness